I'm working on a big video that I failed to get out this weekend and the jobs are queuing up so I thought today I'd do a very quick video fitting a new five lever mortise deadlock on this my shed door. It's a great shame that the old lock um, has died a death. It was a bit chaotic at the best of times fitting as it did on the back of the door like this. So I bought this one from Armungary Direct some time ago. This is going to be rebated into the door itself. And don't forget details of all today's tools will be in the description below the video which you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. Now locks like this that fit on the surface of the door are known as rim locks. And the problem with these locks is they don't generally come in a five lever version. I think three levers is about as much as I've found on the UK market. And of course, five levers is very important for insurance purposes. So if like me on previous jobs, you've been scouring the internet for a five lever rim lock to fit on the back of your door and you can't find something, or if the door itself is so narrow, you can't fit a mortise deadlock inside of the door, you might consider doing something like this, which I've done on my cellar door. It's a five lever, mortise deadlock which I have basically effectively inserted on the back of the door by means of this recycled engineered oak flooring. That way you've got the best of both worlds, you've got a really secure five lever lock on a door which would otherwise have been too thin to accommodate it. And I put this scutcheon on the back rather than the front of the door to stop people peering in. Reasonably challenging dog, dog? A reasonably challenging job because this is an oak door but I'm going to keep today's video as quick and simple as possible and try and keep it under 10 minutes. thought about leaving the door in situ but as I've got these left over from a recent job I did with the little wedges handily screwed on the side so I don't lose them I'm going to take the door off its hinges and put it in these door clamps. And I massively recommend you getting one of these if you haven't already you'll find a link to my Amazon store at the end of the video. I use this all the time even though I've got a much larger Makita multi bit set. Always a worry with these old rusty screws but the impact driver made light work of that. And it's onto my improvised door clamps. I made these door clamps for a narrower door, these don't fit. So I'm just going to hastily knock together a couple of new ones. Nice and sturdy. Uh, most of these mortise locks come with a template, which if you like templates is probably quite helpful. But I'm just gonna borrow elements of it, like the fact that it tells me that the mortise I need to remove is 91 millimeters long by 18 millimeters wide. And I'm using an 18 millimeter draw bit. My job here is slightly complicated by the fact that this is not the original end of the door. By that I mean the previous owner has added this extra piece here and it's not the right width. So whatever I do won't look central, but obviously my rebate needs to be central to the door, not this filler piece on top. Door is 42 millimeters wide, so my center is 21 millimeters. That's the line. I've got my 18 millimeter drill bit. Mark a crude depth stock upon this drill bit with the aid of a bit of, a bit of cloth tape. And then drilling the hole, you just want to keep it as, try and keep it as straight as possible. They said five holes, but if I overlap my holes, it'll minimize the amount of chiseling work we need to do. Although you'll find if you try this with softer pine, the drill bit will wander as you see later on in the video. It's a quick blast with my leaf blower to clear the debris from the mortise. And then I mark the area that needs to be chiseled out. I always say the key with chiseling is to have a sharp chisel, obviously. Here I'm using my three quarter inch chisel and then narrower chisels for the ends of the mortise. And the second rule is be patient, don't rush and be as careful as you can with each cut. Then you'll get a great result and obviously practice makes perfect. You 
can actually get corner chisels like this and I'll be featuring this one in an outdoor seating build that I've got planned very soon. But for today, I'm just going to use this one because not many people out there will have a square corner chisel. Okay, that's looking pretty good. After marking the area to be rebated for the deadlock faceplate, or outer forend as it's called, to a five millimeter depth, I use my Ryobi quarter inch shank trim router to do the rebating. A link to a recent video featuring this router is coming up on screen now. Being careful to avoid this old screw that I was unable to remove at the outset. I then tidied up the edges with my chisel and filed down the screw with my old trusty Black & Decker power file. That's where we want it. So at this point I thought I might just try and use this template because it's got to make my life a bit easier. Two drill holes. There and that. To be fair that's pretty good. And I'm using a 10mm drill bit to drill the keyhole. So blunt this drill bit. <laughs> a bit clumsier than I'd normally do if I'm honest and because my drill bit's a bit blunt we had it wandering a bit but that'll but work absolutely fine. The screws going in here are brass so what we do need to do is accurately drill a decent pilot hole because this is oak and old oak at that. What I tend to do is line the screw up against the drill bit and you want a drill bit that's the same diameter as the stem of the screw, not counting the, the screw thread itself. Right, we've got this rather nice brass escutcheon here, which I'm lining up by eye. Marking with my pencil. Whoops, that moved a bit. And then bradle. Back to my little bag of screws. And I'm going to attempt this one without drilling. Because the screw is so small, I feel it doesn't need a pilot hole. Check the key still works. I forgot to do a key plate on the rear, so I fitted this after hanging the door. So then it was on to rehanging this door, and I decided to replace those rusty old screws with these A4 grade stainless steel screws. It's a good idea to use A4 grade stainless steel in oak because the acids in the oak can rot normal steel screws. And I love these Torx drive screws, they're far superior to your Posi drive or Phillips head, and I plan to use a lot more of these in forthcoming videos. The only thing I don't know is whether they'll stick out too much for the door to shut, but we'll find that out in a minute. With these Torx bits, there's absolutely no chance that the screw bit's gonna come out while you're driving it home. What's not ideal here is the gap between the door and the frame. I'll need to resolve that at some point. But for now, it's better than not having it locked at all. And we've got about 12 millimeters poking into the door and I won't rebate this box. So it's now just a case of marking the deadbolt position against the door frame and taking my instructions from the lock box template. I check the location by measuring the center of the deadbolt to the edge of the door and transcribe this onto the door frame. After another hastily improvised cloth tape depth stop, I drilled three 20 millimeter holes in the frame for the lock box, doing my best to navigate around the galvanized nails left in the door frame by the previous owner. Notice how the drill bit slips from one hole to the next in this soft pine when compared to the precision I was able to get when drilling holes much closer together in the oak door. 
a little tidying up in the corners with my chisel which along with the drill bit was unfortunately damaged by these hidden nails and the lock box was installed and screwed into place this time with no need to pilot the holes in the soft pine for the brass screws you probably noticed in that clip the movement of this door frame i could fix that with some frame fixings like this but given the state of this frame i'll probably replace the entire frame at some point so that's it for today hopefully this has made you realize that fitting one of these mortise deadbolts is not an intimidating thing to do as long as you follow a few basic steps i'm sorry for the odd audio and focusing issue today my normal camera fell off its tripod so it's in for repairs at the moment um, if you've liked today's video it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up below and as i always say i would love to have you subscribe if you're new to my channel you can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of each new upload. See you soon.